Hello and welcome back, folks. This is Chapter 9, probably the most exciting title I've ever seen in a textbook, Routine <laughs> Business Messages. <laughs> uh, but trust me, this is uh, really important information, even though it's about routine stuff. Uh, as the book points out quite rightly, uh, this is the majority of the messages you'll be sending and helping people send as a professional communicator. So it, it's very, definitely worthwhile to zero in on this topic, uh, figure out how to do this well, uh, what tends to go wrong, uh, what are some general guidelines to follow when sending uh, various kinds of messages. And again, to sort of set this up, I put a clip uh, in the, uh, in the uh, put a link to a YouTube clip from the uh, show Star Trek The Next Generation, uh, one of my favorite shows. And uh, so if you haven't seen that, go and watch it. It's Data and Worf. There's a little bit of miscommunication, some problems with attitude, shall we say, and it also has an apology scene. And I think it really uh, shows some, you know, even though it's a fictional clip, it is, it's, you know, real life lessons that can be gleaned uh, from this exchange. So uh, go and watch the clip, and then when you come back, think about uh, the situation there, uh, what went wrong, and what you might infer from this about uh, a routine a business message, or in that case, a command uh, situation. Uh, do you think it was handled well? Uh, what could have been better? Uh, you know, whatever you want to say about it, <laughs> say it, and then we'll uh, continue on. All right, and here we go with those learning objectives. We have four this time, nice number. I don't know about you, but I prefer when we have fewer rather than 100 of these. Uh, anyway, we'll talk about describing uh, how delivering routine messages impacts your credibility or ethos, as you might say if you are a rhetorician feeling nerdy. Uh, 9.2, describe the process for developing a routine business message. You know, in other words, how do you get started with it? Uh, we'll construct, uh, task or construct task oriented routine messages. We'll be looking at requests, expectations. Uh, this is a really important one. Uh, directions, responses to inquiries, announcements, and claims. Uh, so these are all, you know, you've probably written some of these already, uh, whether as a student or whether if you're already in a job, in an office, you've probably done some of this before, or even in your personal life. And then uh, the last one, we'll talk about how to construct relationship-oriented routine messages. Again, very important. This is a big thing. Almost all businesses and companies want these days and want to have a relationship with their customers or clients. A lot of uh, places don't even use the word customer anymore, right? The, you know, if you're at Sam's Club, they talk about associates and so on and so forth. It seems like there's a hundred synonyms for that. Uh, but that's what it's about, right? It's, even if it's a routine message, you don't want it to sound like it's coming from a machine. Uh, you want it to sound uh, personal. Uh, so this will cover uh, various uh, kinds of uh, relationships you'll have with employees or colleagues. Uh, appreciation for something, uh, but also apologies and expressions of sympathy. And I actually think these last two, you know, I don't know about you, but I never had a class where they fixated on those two topics. You know, how do you make a, a good professional apology? <laughs> or how do you express sympathy? You know, it's, a lot of people just, they're kind of flummoxed, right? They, they don't know what to say. They just avoid the person. Uh, but, you know, that's not good to do, obviously. And so I think it's really good to be talking about those two in particular. So anyway, I think these are some really good learning objectives. Hopefully you're <laughs> excited as well. Uh, so let's get into this. All right, so we'll be covering credibility, uh, the three C's of that, competence, caring, and character. Uh, components of those messages, task-oriented routine messages, requests, expectations, directions, responses to inquiries, <laughs> in other words, answering questions, and uh, relationship-oriented routine messages, apologies, appreciation, and sympathy. Let's see. All right, so let's uh, talk about how the uh, a routine message can impact credibility. And that's one of the things I liked about that clip I sh uh, had you watch, because uh, you see Worf kind of loses a little credibility with Data. And at the same time, Data seems to be potentially losing some credibility with Worf. So it really is a credibility issue. And you, know, you can decide to decide for yourself if you think it was resolved uh, well in that follow-up meeting in the uh, ready room. I tend to think it was. But here's just some categories um, or some, I guess some aspects of ways your credibility can be affected uh, by a, a good or bad routine message. You know, obviously responsiveness is a huge thing. Uh, generally, you want a 
pretty fast response. Uh, if, you know, you just got a simple question, quick question. <laughs> you want a quick answer. Uh, and if it takes forever for them to get back to you, that can kind of uh, have an impact. Or if they forget and don't respond at all, uh, even a bigger impact. Uh, reliability, uh, attention to detail, uh, the commitment, as well as the professionalism. And I think probably the professionalism is where uh, Worf went wrong in that little exchange, right? Wasn't it very professional for him to grumble and complain audibly in, in front of the crew instead of just uh, you know, being committed enough to his uh, role there uh, to keep that to himself? And then they further break down credibility, uh, credibility into three different components. Uh, so let's take a look at these. Uh, first is what most people think about is competence. You know, do you have the skills that you need to do the job? Can you get the job done? <laughs> so, you know, if you're writing uh, routine messages back and forth from, oh, I don't know, uh, maybe you want to have some electrical work done in your house. <laughs> so that's kind of important, right? Does this person actually know what they're doing uh, with the wiring, with the voltage? You know, are they talking the talk? <laughs> do they have the knowledge? Uh, you know, there's ways you could probably tell that by the way they, they talk to you. Uh, if they're, you know, if they, if they don't know the name of whatever kind of outlets those are, then <laughs> I don't know the name myself, but you know the little outlets that have the test and reset buttons on them. You know, there's a name for that kind of outlet. And if they didn't know that, and if you're asking them about it, and they're like, oh, I, don't, I don't know what you mean. What, what is that? Well, you'd probably start questioning questioning their competence. But really, this is probably the it's probably a little overstated. You know, even though that's what most people think about first, uh, you know, most of the time they will have the competence. That's probably not the, the problem. It's one of these other two. Uh, so let's take a closer look at them. Uh, the caring. You know, do they care about you? <laughs> do, they, do they cultivate a, a sense of community, right? You know, is it kind of just, are they kind of stuck in their own world, their own ego bubble, uh, or do they feel like they're uh, part of a community and, and you are also part of that? community. Uh, do they kind of have this, do you get this impression of a giving personality uh, or is it all taking? You know, we talked about that before. You know, they, they, they seem to be generous with their time. Uh, even, even again, it's just a routine thing, right? Uh, but nevertheless, uh, there's ways to do that in a caring way, a generous way, and there's ways to do that in a dismissive way, or, or, or they're kind of annoyed by you asking the question uh, that would go against caring. Uh, and then lastly, character. It's probably the most uh, rhetorical, uh, traditionally rhetorical one. Uh, this is what we talk about. We talk about ethos. Uh, so, what is their? You know, how does the communication reflect upon them as a person? You know, is it thinking about this person's reputation? Uh, not again. Not just can they do the job or do they care about the the company, but uh, do, you know, do they, are they honorable? <laughs> are, are they good people? Do they have high moral and ethical values? Uh, do they really seem committed uh, to the stakeholders? Uh, do they seem honest? Uh, all these things can be impact or can make an impact on, or, or you know, all these factors play into just a routine message. You might not have really have thought about that very much. Okay, so you will be producing many, many <laughs> routine messages. You know, I don't know how many we talked about before, how, how many uh, emails people tend to send. Uh, some more, some less, but you know, chances are whether it's email or on the phone or texting or whatever the, the format is, uh, there will be lots of these routine messages going back and forth. So one of the goals of an excellent business communicator is somebody who can process these quickly. So this is one of the things that they will probably hire you to do as <laughs> a professional communicator. They say, look, we're being overwhelmed with information. We've got just tons of emails coming in. We've got phone. The phones are ringing. The requests are coming in left and right. There's a big line. You know, we need somebody to come in here that can really, uh, you know, process a big stack of this stuff quickly, uh, get it in, get it out the door. <laughs> so part of it is about speed, uh, but you know, as we'll see, it's also, of course, uh, clarity and <laughs> well, we'll get into it. Uh, so how do you develop these uh, routine messages? So again, the goal being to uh, not to take forever. You know, it'd be great if you had all day long for every message, and then it could be perfect. Uh, but you know, not when you've got eight hours in a day, <laughs> and uh, you know maybe 
You wish you had twice that amount of time to respond, uh, but you don't have it, right? You just don't have the time. Uh, so we're going to have to uh, make some sacrifice, uh, sacrifices here. There will be less planning. Uh, there will be less reviewing. But I think the key here is that there, that's not to say there's no planning <laughs> and no reviewing. It's just less uh, than you would, if, you know, if you had all day. And I, I hear about this all the time, and I hear this from students too. And, and they'll, they'll say things like, you know, this, this wasn't as good as it could have been. I just didn't have enough time to do this. And they're really complaining. They're really angry uh, that I didn't give them more time uh, to do this, uh, this exercise or whatever it is. Uh, but really, that's kind of a good training. You know, it's kind of good training for a very typical situation. If <laughs> you talk to anybody uh, that works in an office and they'll tell you, yeah, there's, you know, I always wish I had more time to you know, write a proper response or, you know, <laughs> write this uh, message, but I don't have it. All right. Anyway, with all that said, let's take a quick look at some of the uh, things you can do quickly uh, that will make a difference. Uh, one is stating that primary message in 10 words or fewer. Uh, so if you have to say, you know, really, I, I think this kind of is just by definition, right? If you can't say what it, what it is in 10 words or fewer words, you know, at that point, is it really a routine message? You know, it seems like at that point, it's something a little bit more important. So <laughs> I almost kind of say this one kind of goes without saying, uh, but I do think it is, <coughs> excuse me, uh, it is critical to put that early and make it really clear and not uh, convoluted. And then we'll follow up that primary message with our explication paragraphs of, uh, really, these are, these are very short paragraphs, almost just maybe a couple sentences long. Uh, restating that request in a key message and more specific terms. And I like this this or here, uh, or the key message in more specific terms. And I like restate versus repeat. Because uh, maybe the, if it wasn't clear for the uh, primary message, you know, you, you tried to say it, for whatever reason it didn't take. Well, there at the end, you can restate it in different words. And sometimes that will make the difference, right? So maybe if it's confusing before you've cleared it up, or they have two different ways, uh, you know, to read this message, and that can help a lot. And then always remembering the, uh, what a lot of people take for, uh, or dismiss, but it's really important is to state that goodwill. Always take that extra few seconds to, uh, <laughs> you know, show that you care about them. And here's our lovely triangles again, planning and writing and reviewing. Uh, so this has been in the book before, so I'll just <laughs> skip over that for now. All right, so how do you make a request? Probably the most common type of uh, routine messages, right? So you're, you're probably coordinating work efforts, unless you're just at a job where you're the only employee. Uh, there's probably all sorts of uh, little teams, big teams. Uh, you might be a manager. Uh, you know, there's, there's all kinds of situations where you have to coordinate with other people uh, to make sure the job gets done. So that's probably the bulk. Uh, then we have uh, other situations that involve making a request, buying something, selling something, or a service. Uh, but also maintaining a, a work relationship. You know, for that last one, I like to think about the uh, you know, sort of events that, can, that happen at the office. <laughs> you know, they're not necessarily about the job at hand so much as they are about building a rapport, maybe your uh, team building exercises, that sort of thing. Uh, and then look at, let's look at the components of a request. Obviously, <laughs> make the request, provide the rationale for the request. You know, we don't want to, uh, unless you are, you know, in a situation where you're in command <laughs> and you feel like it's, you know, it's beneath you to have to, you shouldn't have to ex explain uh, that request. You, you probably won't be in that situation. <laughs> so you do need to provide some kind of rationale for the request. Uh, some people get this attitude about, well, I'm the boss. I shouldn't have to uh, tell you why. You should just do it. Not a very healthy attitude. You know, we're not living in the <laughs> a monarchy. <laughs> Uh, so get used to it, you know, providing a rationale. Uh, the call to action, you know, what is it that you want? And they have a little star, their little asterisk, because you don't always need that. If it's a lengthy message, though, maybe they forget by the time they get to the end, uh, so it doesn't hurt to uh, repeat it again. And I know it's not exactly a routine message, uh, but uh, the job letters that students write uh, when they're applying, for jobs, they write a resume and a little job letter. I always say, you know, if it's uh, it's a good idea in that last paragraph to repeat the call to action, which would be something like, um, you know, please call me at such and such a number uh, to schedule an interview. 
uh, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, just because, you know, if it's two or three paragraphs uh, long, they might have forgotten that. Uh, and then stating the goodwill. Uh, so let's look at these uh, examples here. And always, I, I just love these. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> I always find the uh, less effective ones are the bad examples humorous. Uh, and I guess because I can easily imagine myself sending one of these. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me that I find these so amusing. But but anyway, here's the less effective routine request. And and it's got, kind of hard to know where to start with this. I mean, uh, okay, first, this is what I want you to do. I mean, don't even read this. Uh, just just kind of step back a little bit, kind of move back until it's, it's sort of blurry. You can't really make out this text. And just ask yourself about the, sh do you like the shape of the email? And it, you probably don't like it, right? Because it's just one big block. It's kind of intimidating when you see that big block of text. You just, I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't even want to read this. <laughs> it, just, it just looks like it's long. You know, it looks like something I had to, to really focus on this to understand, like, what the heck is it about? And so even without reading it, I'm already feeling kind of bad about it. Uh, but they point out some other things, and let's see, what's, what's this first one here? Non-descriptive subject line. <laughs> the subject line, it just says software. And so that's, that's all they put, software. <clears throat> that's about as vague. <laughs> I guess you could just put important. It's kind of hard to think of a, a vaguer uh, subject line than that, but obviously that doesn't really give you very useful information. Software. So what? <laughs> what about software? What software? <laughs> uh, terrible. <clears throat> the request is difficult to find. Well, no kidding. It's this big. It's, it's a big blurb. It's horrible. I, I. It'd probably take me ten minutes to really read this and figure out what. What do you want me to do? Now let's see. Rationale is generic and vague. Okay, let's see what what that is. I recommend we also invest in relatively inexpensive online training so they can make the most of the software. So I guess so they can make the most of the software. Yeah, that's that's pretty generic. <laughs> they can make the most of it. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't get much vaguer than that. Navigation is challenging. One paragraph of 150 words. Yeah, I, I would go beyond challenging. <laughs> this is a... This is a disaster. All right, so again, uh, this is the more effective routine request. Uh, so again, don't read it right away. Just kind of step back, kind of move back until you can kind of get a feel for the overall structure of it. And you probably feel better already, right? The, that, that big monster paragraph is here. It's broken up. We get some nice smaller chunks. He's probably about 80 words long. Yeah, 14, 60, 59. So none of these paragraphs is over 80 words long. The longest one is 60. So you can see what a difference that makes. You know, I don't, I'm sure you can, I'm sure you agree. <laughs> and then also, if you look a little here, a little closer here, you see they got a table in there. You know, tables make this, uh, you know, make the data a lot easier to see. It's a lot neater uh, for one thing, but it kind of, my eye is kind of drawn in. You know, I can easily make out this information be difficult that was just part of a big paragraph and let's see what we've got here at the end some goodwill uh, andrea we're eager to make these purchases and allow the analyst team to begin using these tools uh, please let me know if you can authorize these purchases thanks brian so they, they take a little time but you know they got the please in here <laughs> they're eager to make the purchases <laughs> and it's, it's not just about being nice it's just a uh, you know, sometimes being nicer is also being uh, more effective. I'd probably say all the time. Yeah, so look at this subject line. So before it was just software. Now look at the difference here. Purchase of IBM SPSS modeler for our, for our marketing analyst. You know, that is really clear. I wouldn't even have to open this email. That's kind of the, the goal I strive for is, can I, can I write that subject line so that you don't even have to open the email to know what it's about? Uh, that's great. Let's see. Request stated clearly up front. So they got, Dear Andrea, can you provide a purchase authorization for statistical software for our three marketing analysts? 
boom, you're done. <laughs> well, you're not done. But <laughs> yeah, that's clear. You could just stop right there and say yes. Uh, but they, they do go into the rationale. You know, why would you want to do that? Uh, they explain that clearly, quickly. Yeah, so boom, that's very effective routine request. <clears throat> Let's see, setting expectations. And so setting expectations is directly tied to your credibility and ability to foster interpersonal uh, trust. <laughs> uh, so they talk here about, you know, if you are giving commands or instructions to people, uh, if you're working on a team, you're collaborating with people, uh, you may not feel comfortable, you know, telling them what the expectations are. Or, or maybe you're vague about the expectations. You know, as a teacher, uh, this is, a, you know, probably one of the worst mistakes you can make. And I hear a lot of fellow teachers, you know, and they'll say things like, well, I don't want to be too clear. You know, I don't want to just give them instructions because, you know, I kind of like to be being surprised you know, when, they, when they do well or they might surprise me with something. Uh of their own uh, that they wouldn't have gotten to if I gave them explicit instructions. But but on the other hand, it's annoying. <laughs> you know, I remember uh, asking a professor one time, like, well, how long uh, does this you know essay need to be? You know, kind of the classic uh, freshman question. And uh, his answer was something like, well, it, it just needs to be as long as it needs to be <laughs> to make your points, <laughs> to back them up. <laughs> uh, that was, uh, yeah, disappointing. <laughs> I was kind of disappointed by that uh, reaction because, you know, of course, in reality, they, of course, he had expectations, just wasn't letting me know what, what they were. So kind of, it kind of did, you know, it kind of did affect my trust. Like, can I trust this person? They, they should just tell me <laughs> at least a ballpark figure. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, more, it can also happen in any kind of team situation. You know, if you just tell somebody to do something and you don't give them the, the deadline or you know, how long it needs to be or what exactly you're expecting, uh, maybe they think they did a great job. Maybe they think you'll be satisfied and they're actually surprised when you're not. And the tendency, of course, is to blame the person. But you always need to step back, ask yourself, did I set the expectations? Did I make it clear? <laughs> if you didn't, you really can't blame that person. Yeah, sometimes uh, they're just messing with you. But on the other hand, probably better to assume and <laughs> take some responsibility for it yourself, not just to be one of those people that uh, blames everybody else for everything. Well, let's look at this uh, breakdown. Setting expectations. Yeah, explain the expectations. Right. What do you, how long does it need to be, etc. Uh, describe the responsibilities. Yep. Uh, who's going to do, I'm, I'm kind of thinking here about these uh, group projects I assign or the uh, times I've collaborated with other authors on books and things. Uh, a lot of times when that fails, it's because we didn't do these things. Right. So we just kind of had this vague sense of, well, I'll do about half the work. Um, he or she will do uh, half the work, 50% <laughs> of it or whatever. It's like, what does that even mean, 50%? I mean, it's, it's pretty vague, isn't it? Uh, we should be a lot clearer going into it, like, well, I'll do this, you know, I'll proofread it, or I'll do this section, uh, you do that section, or, or I'll find, uh, uh, you know, five sources uh, to back, you know, to back this up. Uh, the more descriptive you can be there, uh, the easier it will be to have a successful uh, collaboration. Uh, providing deadlines, another key component. You know, again, a lot of people uh, tend to be kind of vague, like, when will this be done? And maybe somebody's done quickly, uh, the other person's not done yet. Uh, that could create friction. Uh, so even if you don't really like this, always better to be clear, like, when is the due date? <laughs> when is the deadline? And I was just, just today, I sent, I probably sent two emails, not to students, but to uh, publishers I'm working with. And uh, they were asking me to do things like review some proposals and, and whatnot. But they, you know, neither one told me, like, when do they want this by? So I had to email them back and say, when do you want, <laughs> basically that, when do, when do you want this by? They didn't provide the, uh, the deadlines. So how am I supposed to tell, you know, <laughs> you know, they asked me, can I review this proposal? But they didn't tell me when they needed to buy, so I couldn't answer the question, you know, because I'm a pretty busy guy. <laughs> if, you know, if I don't have enough time to do it, uh, I had to say no. Right? So that was kind of a mistake they made. 
uh, discussing the uh, coordination. You know, how will this process unfold? When, you know, how are you going to hand it back and forth? Uh, and then, of course, stating the goodwill. Uh, again, the little time it takes to write please and thank you and uh, good wishes or whatever. That, that time is never wasted. So let's see. <laughs> oh, my favorite. The less effective example. A less effective example of setting expectations. All right, let's see what kind of mess they made here. Uh, again, the subject line reveals little about the expectations. All right, what's the uh, subject line? Deadlines. <laughs> okay, I think <coughs> I think this is a little better than the previous. I mean, at least I, I get some sense of what this is about. Yeah, but it, it is pretty vague. Deadlines. <clears throat> Tone is demanding and bossy. Let's see, can we pick that out? Hey, Barry and John, you two will be our lead team for the following two projects. Jansen slippers and, and Forrester eyeglasses. Yeah, so you two will be our lead team. It does sound kind of like this <laughs> uh, officer, captain on a starship, right? Just prove me. You'll do this, you do that. Uh, no please, no thank you, no questions. Just, you know, hop to it. Let's see, navigation is challenging. Deadlines are buried. Are there deadlines in this? Let's see. I expect the following deadlines over the next two months. Oh, I expect the following deadlines over the next two months. Yeah, that definitely, that definitely sounds bossy. Uh, for Jansen, we will present the preliminary, preliminary concepts to the client on Friday, July 10th, 2015. Yeah, so that's the, uh, that's the first deadline. And let's see, there's another deadline here somewhere, Friday, July 17th. And there's some other dates, but anyway, I'm not going to belabor this too much. You see, obviously, the, all this, there's another date there. Now that I'm looking at this, I'm seeing dates all over the place. <laughs> it's just really confusing. Wow. Uh, more common than you'd think. You know, I guess I have to deal with this, I feel like, on an hourly basis. <laughs> All right, so more effective example. <clears throat> you might look at this and think, wow, nobody would go to this much trouble. You, know, you did say a routine message, right? So well, what is this? Uh, but really, this doesn't take, it might look like it takes a long time, uh, but once you figure out how to do this, like how, you know, how to make the bulleted list, uh, how to indent something, you know, it really doesn't take that long, does it? A lot of this could be just automatically uh, done for you. Uh, so it's not like this will, I bet you this did not take that much longer to write than that previous one, but it's a lot easier to follow this. I mean, here we have the deadlines, I and mean, this is what I noticed right off the bat, is they moved all that, uh, the actions and the deadlines into sort of a, I guess this is a table, uh, but it's really clear, you know, it's really easy to see this now, whereas before it would, I had to dig into that paragraph, it was messy. See, so expectations stated clearly and immediately, immediately. We have just secured two new accounts. You two will form our creative lead team on these promising accounts. I recommended you for these accounts to the executive management team due to your excellent past work on fashion and clothing accounts. <laughs> so a little bit of flattery in there, right? A little bit of compliment. Uh, definitely shows some goodwill. This doesn't sound that demanding to me anymore. And then if we get down here to the bottom, uh, instead of be in the office at 3 p.m. or else, <laughs> it's uh, can we meet in Barry's office at 3 p.m.? Question mark. If that doesn't work, how about 4 p.m. today? Uh, let me know which time works best for you. If, you know, to me, I would kind of want to slip in a little please. Please let me know which time uh, works best for you. But you know, but this gets the job done. Definitely a lot. You know, I get the impression here, Brian, a very nice person. You know, it'd be a lot more. Uh, impressed with him, <laughs> a lot more credible uh, than that sort of demanding, pushy boss in the previous email, and all that bossiness and big messy blurb of a, of a paragraph to have to try to uh, dig into to figure out what the heck he wants. All right, moving on then to directions. And so they say directions typically include specific step-by-step -step guidelines <laughs> for accomplishing tasks. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's that's probably startled you. I'm <laughs> uh, just kidding. Uh, and messages with procedures and directions make the steps stand out. Yes, very good. So state the goal, step-by-step <laughs> -step directions, and the goodwill. And so the example I like to use for this is uh, just a cookbook. 
you get a blue apron. I've been getting these uh, blue apron meals for some reason. <coughs> Boy, I've ordered these. <laughs> I always, I'm always the, the person that ends up cooking it. But but anyway, so we're gonna comes in a box. You open up the box. Uh, there's all these cards in there, and they always start. And is that, I, should, I wish I could show them to you because they're they're very good examples of uh, effective uh, communication. But yes, they always start with the goal, <laughs> and, and by stating the goal uh, in those, they, they have a nice picture of like what what it is. Well, up at the top is the name of the dish, right? And then they'll have this nice color photo that, that you know that clearly shows you the uh, the plate, you know, and how it should look like. You know, and that's the goal. Uh, the, it can't be clearer than that. <laughs> it is right there. <laughs> you know, then you flip it over, and it's got the step-by-step uh, -step directions also with pictures. And there's lots of uh, goodwill all throughout the document. And a lot of, uh, you can do this. <laughs> you know, it'll be delicious. You know, thank you for ordering from a Blue Apron. Uh, you're a great person. Uh, for <laughs> I mean, being a little bit facetious there, but, you know, you get, you get the idea. It doesn't ever come across as mechanical or, uh, you know, like a computer algorithm sent me this uh, this package. You know, they try to make it feel personal, like I'm special, <laughs> for lack of a better word. <laughs> All right, again, we have the less effective directions. Oh, boy, why do they, what have they done this time? Uh, they're just not having any luck with their subject lines, let me tell you. Uh, here, the subject line is... Travel. Well, <laughs> travel. <laughs> uh, maybe this email will travel to the uh, trash can. Yeah, very vague. Uh, then they say the tone is careless and sloppy. Use of the passive voice makes that message makes message impersonal. <coughs> All right. <coughs> Sorry, losing my voice here, but I'll I try to get through this. See, the process is fairly simple. Yeah, that's that's a good way to uh, <laughs> start off anything. <laughs> this is child's play. Any nitwit can figure this out. You know, as soon as you say something like that, it kind of stacks the deck. Makes a person feel bad, right, if they don't understand the uh, the process. Kind of like that Monty Python clip uh, where John Cleese comes out and gives those incredibly confusing uh, directions and keeps saying, yes, it's so simple, uh, the lower peg, blah, blah, blah. So not a good way to start. Uh, once there is a determination that the trip is necessary, I've determined that already. <laughs> uh, a TA is required. The form should be filled out and signed by your direct supervisor. Then the form should be taken to HR. It will then be sent directly to our travel agency, and you will be connected about setting up your tip. See, already I'm like, huh, uh, what? <laughs> I got lost somewhere in between those sentences. Uh, after the trip... Any receipts need to be turned in to HR, and reverse, uh, reimbursement generally takes about 10 days, <laughs> unless you're younger, you're here, the younger brother who's having his hair cut. <laughs> you, you get the idea. Hope this helps. <laughs> well, then I hope it does, too. <laughs> I don't think it does, though. <laughs> oh, poor, poor Brian. Needs all the help uh, he can get. All right, so here we have the uh, more effective directions, and I don't think it would take much uh, to make it more effective than that first effort. Uh, but really, with these, I'm, I want you to kind of slow down, really look at these. You know, flip back and forth if you can, or look in the book. Look at those ineffective directions because it's not those aren't really that far fetched. You know, if you are hired on some somewhere uh, in the role of a professional communicator or just in based on your ability to communicate as an English major or whatever it is. This is the kind of help that they're, they're going to want. And you might be asked by the manager, uh, the boss, the supervisor, hey, can you know, I need to send out these directions. Can you look this over? Can you basically help me <laughs> look like a professional? <laughs> you think that would never happen. That very commonly, that, that probably will happen uh, once you get the job. This, this is very likely to be part of your, <clears throat> you know, your skill set. You know, ask someone presenting him or herself as a professional communicator. So <laughs> I say all that uh, just to kind of take a close look and let's let's just go through this and see, you know, what did they do? So the directions are specific and clear. And so we can be asking asking ourselves, what is clearer about it or how is this more specific? <clears throat> so already just in the subject line alone, we have instead of just travel, procedures for setting up travel. 
boom right off the top of the <laughs> don't even have to read further i can already tell this is going to be a lot better directions it's a lot clearer already i haven't even opened it yet just looking at the subject line boom already uh, i'm feeling more uh, i feel like the person's more credible <clears throat> all right john for complete details go to the travel section of the human resources intranet portal you will immediately find all policies and forms that you need so this is the the main meat of the email it's just right off the right at the top first thing they say uh, they've used some bolding here uh, to make that stand out the human resources intranet portal because that's the, the important part of that sentence and if you look a little closer they've even put the uh, use some italics there to make travel section stand out so it wouldn't just bleed together and be confusing uh, then they go on with the uh, explicating the the steps uh, so here are the basic steps <laughs> pasted directly from the portal uh, with several comments for me inserted in italics you know so sometimes uh, when you're in a hurry you just want to say look go to the portal <laughs> it's in the syllabus yeah I'll put that in the syllabus go look at the syllabus you know that might make that might save a little time <laughs> it may, might make you feel better somehow uh, but it's coming at the expense of the student and it's not really earning you much goodwill and if you don't care about that fine uh, but if you do you know would it really take that much effort to just copy and paste the, the relevant snippet and uh, to save them the time uh, where they don't have to click on the portal <laughs> just to get an answer to their uh, request uh, so it might seem redundant to you or it's something that they should do uh, but on the other hand you know think about uh, being the recipient of that right and how that would make you feel versus uh, how this would make you feel so here we have uh, looks like four steps one two three and four they're numbered uh, complete a travel authorization t or ta form see in the other one they didn't tell you even what a ta form was it just <laughs> like the tps report uh, from office space right now i don't know what that means I, ta uh, it takes two seconds to just type it out <laughs> so just in case you forgot uh, there it is uh, they got a link in here so they put a link directly to the form you know another very nice touch uh, submit to the hr person they spelled that out too you know i'm not going to go through this whole thing but <laughs> you can really see uh, these directions are it's not just that they're clearer but they're more polite they're friendlier yeah more professional more helpful let's see where's the they probably put some goodwill statements in here let's see if we can find those uh, <clears throat> as soon as you get the TA form filled in, just let me know and I'll sign it right away. So that's probably about as close as we're going to get to uh, to goodwill here. But just I would say the the meta message here, just the fact that they took the time uh, to write out these steps. Uh, who is this from? Brian. As <laughs> a so Brian kind of explained some things in parentheses too. So even if they don't come right out and say it, uh, I feel like they care. You know, they, they care more about me because they're being specific and clear uh, they, they take they took the time to format this even put a link in here so i really get the idea uh, that brian wants me to succeed so uh, that you know the meta messages of caring <clears throat> all right responding to inquiries so say one of the most important strategies for responding to inquiries is to set off each question so your readers can quickly identify responses to those particular questions and you know they, they talk about bullets here or numbered lists and uh, all kinds all right so we uh again we'll look at some less effective responses to an inquiry uh, so this is the the person writing in to you right if you were in brian's uh, uh, she is you could think what, what would i feel like if i was on the other other end of this <laughs> and now you might have a job where you do this all day all day long right you get emails like this messages phone calls and so <laughs> let's just look at the inquiry first and then as we're going through this think about how would what would be the best way to respond to this <clears throat> all right uh, hi brian and this is from uh, joel uh, joel yang uh, hi Brian I contacted Andrea Johansson about developing some ads she recommended that I contact you directly uh, basically I'm interested in pricing for various advertising options you've probably seen our used sports equipment stores around town we've decided to change our business model and devote half of our retail space to new sports equipment 
Anyway, we want to get the word out. We've always developed in-house advertising, which I think has been amateurish. Of course, we don't have a big budget, so we want quality advertising, but we're concerned about pricing. And so here comes the uh, inquiries. How do your rates compare to other agencies? Do you have specialists in online advertising? What about with social media? And then when could we meet and talk about what you might provide us? Question. Thanks a lot, Joel. So that's the inquiry. And then now let's look at an ineffective and then a more effective uh, response to it. All right, let's see the before picture. Uh, starting with the subject line is just, I think that's just pretty much straight up the same subject line that the uh, <laughs> Joel wrote in with. It's just got an RE colon in front of it. It's for response. You know, I guess it's not terrible, but it could be better. Uh, let's get into the meat of this, though. I see. Hello, Joel. Uh, at least you put that. <laughs> Thanks for getting in touch with us here at Smith & Smith. Answers to all of your questions can be found on our website. <laughs> yeah, everybody loves that. You know, students love it when they ask me a bunch of questions and I say, answers to all of your questions can be found on the syllabus. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Dr. B. Uh, probably not. They're probably not thinking that. Uh, moving on. Uh, generally, you'll find that our rates are extremely competitive with other agencies. More important, we have a great record of return on investment to help you track this figure. Also, our agency has been at the forefront of all forms of online advertising, blah, blah, blah. We've been instrumental in helping small companies rapidly grow their revenues and expand. See the following webpage about our online advertising with examples of our work. So this is probably the, like this little bit here is probably what they really want to see, right? But it's kind of buried in there. You kind of have to get past all this uh, before you get to that all important line. And then we get into uh, the other responses. We can meet at a time and place convenient for you. That's good. Uh, this week I'm available from 2 to 4 on Tuesday, 9 to 11.30 on Wednesday, and in the morning on our afternoon on Thursday. <laughs> so that kind of sounds like it contradicts that uh, idea of inconvenient for me. Now we're getting like all this actually pretty restrictive, like when, when we can meet. <laughs> I mean, we have some options. A little bit tricky, you know, to figure out like morning or afternoon. Uh, there it's specific times, they, you know, two to four, that's obviously afternoon, right? But nine to 11.30, <laughs> you know, it's conceivable that might be an evening uh, hours, I don't know. And then please let me know what the, uh, time that is best for you. <laughs> well, <laughs> a little bit confusing, like do, do I have to select from these options or do they want me to respond and say, and maybe none of those work, so I'm supposed to propose my own time, <laughs> not even consider this. Uh, Non-unified response. A single paragraph contains answers to all of the questions. Yeah, so here we have a more effective response. And already, just without even reading it, I can already tell it's going to be more effective because it's formatted better. It's easier on my eyes. Uh, subject responses to your questions. Setting up a time to meet. So they, they've taken the step there of expanding that subject line, they've, they've broken it up with a semicolon so they can let the person know there's actually two things going on here. They're going to respond to the questions, but there's also going to be a, a setup uh, for the meeting. So see, hello, Joel. Thanks for getting in touch with us. Uh, after we talk for 15 to 30 minutes, I can give you a good idea of your options. Uh, so that's a lot better than <laughs> see the syllabus <laughs> uh, or go to the website. It's already there. I'm not going to repeat it to you here. Uh, no. A lot more polite, a lot more friendly. Remember, the, they kind of, it almost seems as if they want some business, right? It almost seems like they want their business, right? A good sign. Uh, even though they put the uh, website there, uh, they say it has answers to each of your questions, uh, but they're not being uh, snippy about it at all. They broke up the questions. I don't know if they copied and pasted that in. Uh, maybe they did. Who knows? But it's still a little bit more polite the way they, they've set this up. Let's see, there's two pages to this. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this was what I was looking for. So remember before it was kind of confusing, like when, when could they meet? And it was kind of hard for me to figure this up out. They didn't put the PMs, the AMs, for one thing. Uh, they're kind of vague on other points. Uh, here though, they say, uh, I'm, I'm available during the following times this week. So it's broken into a table. 
defending it probably took about as long to set this up as it did just to write it all out but way clearer <laughs> please let me know a time that is best for you you can call directly anytime you know so that's kind of clears that up you can call anytime <laughs> this is when they can physically meet uh, specific responses to all questions good uh, navigation is easy with questions as headings yeah and if you look they even bolded they even bolded the questions so really clear really good organization it's nice it's neat it looks good i'm sure they get a very uh <laughs> give brian a good performance review <laughs> if it comes to that now, let's see creating announcements uh, so this is again a very routine thing i do this all the time everything from canceling a class <laughs> to uh to you know a date has changed or there's a uh, an event going on uh, who knows what it is uh, that's just in my life you'll be sending plenty of your own announcements as well <clears throat> and the goals are a little different than they were for those other ones right and the main thing here is to get attention it is an announcement <laughs> it's kind of a poor announcement if it doesn't get your attention right so that's a big one getting getting their attention uh, but also uh, giving the announcement uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey hey you know you get to their, their attention but you don't actually announce what it is that would be kind of a kind of a big problem uh, the details you know where is it when is it uh, the call to action again not always not always required especially if it's a short or it's obvious <laughs> uh, stating the goodwill yeah another good thing that's it's kind of a recurring theme here right there's the goodwill it tends to show up again and again uh, just on the side note there's a pretty famous roman rhetorician named uh, quintilian who's considered the by some to be the greatest teacher of all time but anyway i just bring him up because that's one of the things he hammered on was goodwill you know it's key to rhetoric you're not going to be persuaded by somebody unless you feel like that person has goodwill towards you right and they want you to succeed uh, if you feel like the person is hates you uh, or uh, lacks confidence in you something like that you probably won't be uh, moved i'll give you that little <laughs> that little bit free of charge all right so creating an announcement now uh, the subject line oops, sorry the subject line must be specific and must create interest uh, let's see less effective announcements oh. <laughs> subject line <clears throat> new policies well that's probably not going to get your attention uh, it's kind of boring information is incomplete missing key dates difficult to read the tone lacks enough enthusiasm yeah we do have these beefy paragraphs here let's see starting it off on behalf of the committee for technology i'm sharing several new policies that impact employees at sns we deliberated carefully about these new policies to meet our stated objective blah, 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 blah. you know if you like me by this point you're like okay uh, 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 kind of like where, where does it get to <laughs> the, the important stuff first set of byod policies makes mobile computing easier employees who use your own information blah 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 so then if you notice in here we're getting like important info like 75 dollars per month that's a reimbursement but it's kind of kind of have to dig into this to figure it out you got all this stuff in parentheses uh, again it's, it's, this is the kind of paragraph right here you'd have to spend some time with this reading it rereading it uh, two or three times to really uh figure out what what is it <laughs> uh, so anyway i'm not going to go much further than that uh, you can see not a very effective announcement yeah here's a more effective one uh, the subject is a lot clearer it, does, it doesn't just say new policy it's a new bring your own device byod policies so i'm not even sure if that other one spelled out like what byod uh, stands for uh, here they spell it out and then put it in parentheses again just to, just in case you don't know <laughs> i wouldn't know <laughs> i think byod bring your own what drugs <laughs> no device <laughs> device matt <laughs> well you know what it said byod uh beginning on july 1st 2015 blah blah and let's see what, what they put in this box information is complete easy to process uh, most readers will recognize all essential information within 15 seconds uh, rationale is clear and concise 
tone is positive and helpful. All right, so let's think about 15 seconds and look into this and see if we can process it. <coughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, beginning on July 1st, 2015, several new BYOD policies will go into effect to provide employees with more mobile and home computing options and ensure better security for Smith & Smith. All right. These new policies were developed by committees comprised of IT managers, blah, blah, blah. New, and then we break it up. New policies to support mobile and home computing. Reimbursement for voice data plans, cold. Uh, employees who use their own mobile phones for work can receive reimbursement for up to $75 per month for voice and data plans. Previously, this was capped at $30 per month. Uh, so then I can skip from there. Uh, reimbursement for mobile home computers. Uh, IT support. And so already I can just, I don't even have to necessarily read all of this material because the way they formatted this, they got basically a little heading. Uh, reimbursement for mobile home computers. Uh, that's set apart with a bullet, uh, but also in italics. So I quickly scan that, see what, what this, do I need to read this? I don't have a, I don't care about mobile home computers. Uh, so I can just read that section heading there and don't even have to read that. <laughs> IT support, all right, don't care about that. So boom, just save myself some time. I didn't have to read all this to figure out what it's about. I could skip it because they put that nice little, uh, little heading there. So now I'm not gonna go on and on about this. You can clearly see for yourself how much easier it is to process that. Okay, not too much more to go. Uh, up to claims. Claims are requests for other companies to cons compensate for wrong, or to compensate for or correct the wrongs or mistakes they have made. Classic example is the insurance claim, right? You want some, <laughs> you took out this insurance policy, whoops, there's been a wreck. You know, hope, hopefully it never happens to you. <laughs> it's, uh, it's unfortunately happened to us uh, way more than I, I feel like it should, but <laughs> maybe just in Minnesota <clears throat> in general, there's more insurance claims because of all, all the snow and ice. So you might might very well have done been through this process before. Uh, but anyway, it's uh, changing up some of the stuff, but it's the same, basically the same idea, right? You make the claim, the rationale for the claim, uh, what do you want them to do? Notice this time it's not optional because <laughs> you uh, it is a claim. Uh, so what do you want them to do? That needs to be very clear. But at the same time, stating goodwill. Yes, yeah, write claims. Keep in mind that your goal is to have your claim honored. Oh, let's just repeat this. It's so important. As you write claims, keep in mind that your goal is to have your claim honored honored. That's the goal. <laughs> the goal is not to vent, uh, to express frustration, to yell at them, uh, anything like that. Uh, you've got something you want to get out of this. That's the thing to keep in mind, right? So uh, that's why I think that's really worth uh, fixating on. Yeah, that's the goal, uh, to have your claim honored, uh, not just to uh, express <laughs> how angry you are. <laughs> Uh, focus on the facts first and emotions second, if at all. Yeah, there's probably not even any reason to, to let them know, <laughs> to be angry. <laughs> uh, that's, again, not the goal. Uh, that's it. You, know, you don't need to go through this process if that's the goal. Uh, we're, we're focusing on results here. Uh, lay out a logical, reasonable, and professional explanation for the claim. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Less effective claim. Subject, please correct billing mistakes on hotel stays immediately. Well, already we have immediately, you know, who does this person, who does Brian think he is? Is he the emperor? <laughs> this sounds very uh, imperious. Uh, immediately, ASAP. Yes, yeah, so that's kind of a bad tone. Let's see, yeah, going on with tone. Tone is accusatory and demanding. Hello, Jeff. I'm quite frustrated that we made an annual agreement with you at a rate of $124 per night for our employees that you have not honored. Within the past two months, two of our employees have stayed at the Prestigio, 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 for a total of 15 nights at a rate of $169. By my calculations, you overcharged us by $675, Jeff. <laughs> In addition, there should be a minor adjustment for taxes that we paid on a higher rate. Please take care of this matter immediately by refunding us that overpaid amount. Thanks a lot. <laughs> well, this is, you know, I've seen a lot worse than this. 
you know, I could have written a, a very <laughs> ineffective claim. <laughs> uh, but you see, uh, you know, it is accusing, it's kind of accusing Jeff of this, like almost like he intentionally did this. You know, what the hell, Jeff? <laughs> it's kind of got that tone and all this business about immediately uh, demanding just, you know, how many times, it really just drives me insane. You know, these these folks that, uh, you know, when they're dealing with a, the, a customer service representative, uh, a pharmacy technician, something like this. And, you know, I just witnessed this the other day. I was there at, a, I think it was Walgreens, and there was a lady that was just, you know, she was the classic, like, banging her fist on the, the counter. You know, I, I need to speak to your superior, your supervisor, and you know, blah, blah, blah. Just, just going on and on at her, uh, complaining about the, and she didn't like that she had to put in, like, a PIN number uh, to get the prescription. You know, I, I don't know all the details, but, you know, the first, it was just everybody in the line. We're all looking at each other like, come on, do we? why are you giving this uh, pharmacist such a hard time? You know, it's not her. She's got nothing to do with this PIN number of this PIN system. You know, it's, it's totally useless uh, to even be uh, up there wasting not just her time, but you know, people are in line and, you know, you know, you get the idea. But I'm sure you could think of plenty of examples of this uh, as well. Uh, so I think, you know, really, I would love to have a requirement that everybody should have to take this class <laughs> or everybody should have to go through some role play uh, where they're on their other end of something like that. Just to appreciate how not just ineffective and in impolite, but just wrong uh, it is to, you know, to be like that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, how would you not just that lady, but anybody write a claim more effectively? Well, lots of things. Uh, uh, for one, what exactly is the claim? Uh, could you apply credits to our account with the Prestigio to offset overbilling on several recent stays by our employees? So notice this is a question. It's not a demand. Uh, they're asking <laughs> this as a question. Could you do this? Uh, and then they go into the details, or like, like what happened. They're not being, who is this Brian again, right? Uh, so he's being a lot more friendly, a lot more positive, a lot more forward thinking here. He's not, in effect, yelling or banging his uh, fist on the counter. No, you, know, you don't get that impression uh, by reading this. It seems a lot more polite. See, so could you send me the exact figure that you will credit to our account question? Thanks a lot. Here's the goodwill. Our employees always appreciate staying at your fine hotel. So yes, even though there's been a, there's been a problem, there's been a pretty sick. I mean, six hundred seventy-five dollars. That's a pretty big overcharge. Nobody's nobody's going to be happy <laughs> that they got overcharged. <laughs> I'm sure Brian's mad. You know, especially if this is coming out of his uh, fund somehow. Looks like he's the account executive, so he might be respond. You know, somebody might be yelling at him about this. So he's, it's not that he's happy about it, but you know, the point is by being polite, a little bit having some goodwill, being uh, complimentary. This doesn't make him look weak. Uh, like he lacks assertiveness, uh, nothing like that. It's just more effective. It's assertive, but polite. You know, that's kind of where you want to be. Uh, here's this one should be a little easier. <laughs> Showing appreciation, a sincere expression of thanks helps achieve business goals and strengthens uh, work relationships. And, you know, and again, so many people have this attitude of, well, I'm the teacher. I shouldn't be thanking them uh, for anything. You know, thank you for submitting your essay. <laughs> Give me a break. That's just what they're supposed to do. You know, that's what the money's for. You know, there's that famous line in a Mad Men where uh, I forget the you know, the names of the characters. But uh, anyway, you know, the idea is, uh, you know, you never thank me. <laughs> you never thank me. <laughs> and uh, Don Draper uh, says, well, that's what the money's for. <laughs> so I don't have to thank you. You know, that, that's what the money is for. And, it's, you know, the reason that kind of strikes us as being a particularly a mean is we've all been on the other side of that, right? And we know it doesn't matter if you have to do it. It's just nice to know it's appreciated. So, yes, that's my duty. I get that. <laughs> but, you know, somebody if I feel like somebody's thankful, somebody appreciates me, it just makes everything at that office uh, flow more smoothly. Uh, so try to think about this at all times, right? Uh, so giving thanks, uh, again, with the rationale and uh, the, the goodwill. 
Uh, so let's look at this. Less effective appreciation. <laughs> Don't tell me Brian messed up an appreciation <laughs> message. <laughs> God, Brian. What's he done this time? Let's see. Hi, you guys. Well, okay, that doesn't sound very professional, I guess. Um, shows excessive, exaggerated thanks. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can pick up on this. Uh, I think you did a fabulous job on the zoo project. I just got off the phone with Anna Galarraga, and we talked about how successful these ads have been. I found out that participation in the zoo special education programs, well, that's uh, that's a problem. <laughs> has increased, has increased. <laughs> He's just so excited, right? I can't even hit the space work. Has increased dramatically. Uh, on the phone call, I was able to secure a verbal commitment for us to do their online campaigns. <laughs> oh, <laughs> is this? <laughs> he had to stop congratulating me to congratulate himself. I feel fortunate to work with such a great group of people. You are all the best. All right, so again, this isn't that. Uh, oh wait, what do we have here? <laughs> to show my appreciation for you, I've made reservations for lunch this Friday at Harper Steakhouse. This is my this is my favorite steakhouse in town. I think you, will, I think all of you will love eating at my favorite steakhouse. <laughs> Don't you have friends like this? You know they can't even congratulate you uh, without making it about yeah yeah here we go self centered <laughs> self congratulate <sighs> Brian. All right, a little bit more effective. Uh, appreciation message uh, great job on the zoo campaign let's celebrate at lunch on friday hi george dan jen and ryan so this is better they he mentions their names not just guys i'm pretty sure that at least one of those is not a guy uh, great job on the zoo project the billboard and radio campaigns you created are a huge success so that just stands alone yeah, that's the you know that's the key thing that's and then we go into the rationale just got off the phone you know here's what you know, goes with that. Here's what explains uh, why he's uh, so appreciative. Let's celebrate. I've made reservations for this Friday. Lunch is on the agency. See details. Location, Harper Steakhouse, uh, Friday, June 26th at noon. So again, this is set apart. They've even bolded this. You know, it's really easy. You know, later on when you're going back through e your email trying to figure out when, when was that? You know, where's the, uh, where Harper Steakhouse? Oh, there's the address. Boom. Uh, what time boom you know easy to see uh, states goodwill thanks again tone is team oriented right so it's not <laughs> self-congratulatory at this time uh, good job brian i would like to <laughs> show my appreciation <laughs> for your appreciation message you know brian is trying <laughs> brian is trying <laughs> okay yeah here's uh here's what i think is really particularly important this is one that it, it's just amazing to me how you can be so successful and basically famous <laughs> you educated at the best schools you name it and yet be completely unable to make an apology you know i'm, I'm not gonna <laughs> name names here <laughs> but i'm sure you've seen plenty of botched uh, apologies maybe you've given a bad apology or, or received one uh, and that's all fine and good but you know how many times you ever had somebody explain like well how would how should you do this <laughs> or what's a good apology actually look like and i like to use the term uh, apology versus faux apology <laughs> or you know a wannabe apology uh, so let's see so an apology typically should include these elements acknowledgement of a mistake or an offense right so it's not that uh you know, I'm, I'm sorry that you were offended. <laughs> That's not an apology. You know, you're not owning anything with that. Uh, you're not acknowledging that you actually made a mistake uh, or taking response. You're not being, you're not holding yourself accountable, uh, which kind of goes in with this third item here. Let me just go through the list and we'll <laughs> uh, try it again. All right, so acknowledge there's been a mistake or an offense. That's the first part. Uh, second part, an expression of regret. Uh, for the harm caused right so this is why nobody is going to accept an apology if there's no expression uh, of regret right if you if you don't seem like you're sorry that's not an apology uh, acceptance of responsibility uh, so again not you're not sorry because you got caught as they say or you're not sorry that you're going to be punished uh, you're sorry uh, 
because you realize you made a mistake and you're holding yourself accountable for it. And you're sorry for the person and for the harm that was caused uh, to them or to the company or whatever. And then and last of, but certainly not least, a commitment that the offense will not be repeated. Uh, so usually people are pretty good with this last one. I, I think it's really the uh, the accepting of the responsibility and the expression of regret for the harm caused, probably where most people tend to go wrong. And that's what, at least that's what I've noticed in all these uh, sort of celebrity, <laughs> sort of these botched apologies. Uh, either they come across as not really being regretful for the harm caused, you know, maybe, again, maybe they're really broke up about losing their job or, or not getting the votes or whatever. <laughs> they regret that thing, <laughs> that part, but they don't really seem to regret the harm caused. You know, that's probably the most common thing. Or they're trying to pass the buck on to somebody else or blaming somebody or something else instead of accepting responsibility for it. <clears throat> so all of this, uh, you know, all of this comes into play. And let's see, effective apology should be timely, yes, and sincere. So I don't think they're going to give us a bad example of an apology or a full apology, but <laughs> we do have this example. So we've got an acknowledgement of the mistake uh, that comes first. Uh, so good morning. I want to take a few minutes to apologize. Last Friday in our executive management meeting, I made several unfair comments. It's kind of owning the mistake, acknowledging you know, something something happened. <laughs> I made a mistake. Uh, regrets. These statements were inaccurate and unfair. I've known each of you for many years, and I'm certain that all of you care deeply about our employees. Okay, and then we get the statement of responsibility. Over the weekend, I thought about my comments. I'm frustrated that we, myself included, give in to unreasonable demands. I think we end up putting too much stress on our employees as a result. I'm sorry that I misdirected my frustration with the demands of our clients at all of you. And then we get the commitment to avoid the behavior. Now, at some point, I hope we can discuss how to negotiate with our clients, blah, blah, blah. For my part, I will avoid any blaming. I would certainly like to hear your experiences, perspectives, and uh, suggestions. So, you, you know, you might be able to do better than, I'm, I guess this is probably Brian again <laughs> uh, here, but uh, it seemed like they did hit all of these areas. Now, so this is kind of the saddest one, but, you know, I'd hope this wouldn't be routine uh, for you. That would be very, <laughs> be very sad to think about it. But, you know, if you work long enough with a group of people, sooner or later, somebody is going to uh, lose a loved one or, or get sick. Or something's going to happen uh, that's going to be unfortunate. And it's going to be, you might be in the situation of, uh, you know, needing to go express some sympathy for this. You know, obviously just ignoring it is inappropriate. Um, avoiding the person, anything like that's inappropriate. Uh, but what do you do? You know, what's the, for some people, this comes very naturally. Uh, for other people, it's kind of uh, mysterious or, or even uh, terrifying uh, when this happens. They don't know what to do or, or what they should say. And so let's look at some of these uh, tips here. And I think these are good. Uh, so the foremost, the foremost requirement of any expression of sympathy is that it be sincere. You know, people, if you want to make a bad situation worse, uh, that's, you know, come across as sarcastic or flippant or dismissive or, you know, just like you're just saying something that, <laughs> without any feeling behind it. Uh, that That's going to come across as insincere and might even make that person feel bad, uh, worse. It's definitely not going to help. Uh, so uh, be sincere. I'd almost probably go so far as to say if, if you really don't care, maybe you shouldn't be saying anything or maybe you should work on your empathy, right? You see, your genuine concern will compensate for any deficiency in the words you use, right? That's that's a very good good point. So you might be f fixating on like the wording of this, and the person might not even care about the, you know, they're not going to be wordsmithing or critiquing your words. <laughs> you know, what, what they care about is that you care about them. You're expressing the proper uh, sympathy, and that's going to go a lot further than any particular uh, word order. Let's see, when possible, handwrite your expression of sympathy on an ice card. All right, that's kind of time-honored traditions there, but uh, you know, usually people do want a handwritten uh, card. Sometimes the email just comes across as a little bit, what's the word? Uh, I don't want to say callous, but just, you know, if somebody's lost, if it's a significant loss and uh, it's somebody that's close to you, then uh, the last thing you'd want to do is just send an email. <laughs> you, know, you probably want to go to the card shop, get a nice card, uh, handwrite a little message on it. 
uh, perfectly credible. And that, that kind of stuff, you know, somebody has been on both sides of this, you know, it really does make a big difference. Uh, people say, well, what what's one card going to matter? Uh, you know, they, they've got friends and family uh, that care about them. True, but, you know, when somebody's going through something like that, I think, uh, any little touch like that can really help. You know, they, they want to feel cared about. Okay. Uh, chapter take, I got kind of sad thinking about the uh, <laughs> the sympathy cards. Oh, deep breath. All right. Uh, here are the chapter takeaways. Uh, how routine messages affect credibility, right? We talked about how that can impact not just competence, which is what most people fixate on, but, you know, how, how much you care and even what kind of person you are as, a, as a, you know, <laughs> what you're like as a person, what's your character. Uh, the components of a routine message. Uh, we talked about those different task-oriented routine messages, requests, expectations, directions, or uh, responses to inquiries. Uh, then we talked about these uh, relationship or social-oriented uh, messages. And those cover everything from, you know, apologies, uh, showing appreciation, and then, and then the uh, sympathy. And so anyway, I hope you uh, enjoy this or at least found it useful. I'd like to hear your questions, comments, uh, stories about any of the uh, aspects we covered here. I uh, always love reading those. I uh, hope you enjoy this and see you next time.